it's, it's firstly it's going to be a very interesting session because we're going to uh, cover the aspect of interviews okay which is very much you know uh, fascinating for all the participants okay so we will talk about how to you know like ace technical interviews what are the do's and don'ts you know and how you can prepare for it so we'll give you like a precise actionable plan or you know actionable steps that you can take towards this direction so even if you are an aspiring techie or you know you are somebody who spent a significant amount in the industry this session will definitely help you so keep posting your questions in the q and a i already see questions coming in so keep posting your questions uh, you know we will talk about what does the interview process of you know these tech giant techs look like how you can prepare for these interviews what skills to master what will help you to stand out from your peers and we'll also you know give you like certain uh, demonstration of these are the type of questions that are asked okay so this is precisely what we will be talking in the session today so yeah i am very much excited i hope you all have your you know notepads and you know your uh, writing material ready for this session okay uh, one thing i also want to mention is that we will have a live q and a as well towards the end of the session so make sure that you're posting all your questions in the q and a because i will be picking up questions from the q and a uh, that is there in front of you screen so make sure that you're posting your questions in the q and a refrain posting anything in the chat because it gets lost okay uh, what i'll do is now meanwhile i'll just launch a poll yeah i've launched a poll you'll see a poll live in front of your screen like i mentioned this is a very important poll for us to understand you know what your background is because see if if you know we are supposed to give you tips we are, we are supposed to help you out we first need to understand what your background is right and then only we'll be able to guide you better so this is the poll you know which is very important for us so make sure all of you all are taking the poll and i'm expecting at least 80 to 90% participation though nobody has started participating yet but yeah i'll wait for a few seconds yeah not much our participants who regularly attend our session know about mukesh so we have mukesh jain today uh, who is a ctio at capgemini you know he he comes with a lot of experience more than 20 25 years in this industry even in product as well and you know if 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 i was somebody who you know who wanted any direction i would definitely run to a mentor like mukesh so thank you so much mukesh for joining us today uh and you know thank you so much for enlightening as always i am looking forward for the session as well sure shubha great uh i am just moving back to the poll let me see okay 67% uh participation which is 70 now i'll just wait for last 10 seconds and i'll i'll shut the poll i'm just shutting the poll we are at 75% fine uh participants who did not get to attend the poll you all can just probably you know post it in the chat i you know we can read it from there as well and uh yeah also you know we want to make the session interactive it, it it's not supposed to be a monologue okay so make sure that you're posting your thoughts your questions you're getting all your questions answered because you know we have uh, you know amazing uh, mentor today so make sure that you're doing that and leveraging on this one hour Okay, sharing the analysis with Mukesh. Uh, if you can see it uh, live, uh, I mean, if you can see it in your in front of your screen, I can see. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. let's talk about the work experience here because that's important. Uh, we need to understand where our participants are at their professional journey. So, seventy-five uh, percent of the participants are with zero to three years of experience. You know, which means they are like freshers, don't have experience, probably have just entered the industry and are looking for a roadmap. You know, to get into these. big brands or you know these tech giants so you know probably that is their intent to join the session we also have we have a second majority of 10 to 15 years which is amazing and we also have participants with 3 to 6 and 6 to 10 years of experience so we have like you know a uh, mixed uh, crowd of professionals here uh, are you from tech software background 50% yes 50% no outcome uh, understand the do's and don'ts of technical interviews uh, understand its application and job opportunities know about uh, software development programs with upgrad uh, this uh, participants you know i will be take helping you with so yeah if you have any questions around this please uh, post it as well uh, and yeah motivation is to enroll into the program for a few participants and to hear from the speaker 
So yeah, this is what I have uh, from my end. Uh, over to you, Mukesh. I would be here moderating the session. The session. Sure, Shubha. Thank you. It's always a pleasure with with you know you on the discussions, uh, sharing the knowledge. Answering questions always. I'm Shem. I think there's a problem with your internet because I'm not able to hear you. Should I can you see the screen? I can okay. see the screen, but you let know. Let me. Let me. Okay. I think just give me a second. I, I'm change. I'll change the internet. Just one second. Yeah. 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 I was not able to hear him. Okay, so I think he's just checking his connectivity, and he's going to come back again very soon. Also, meanwhile, you know, since uh, we have some time, uh, a lot of Parsons said that they want to enroll into the program as well, uh, which we saw in the first poll. So if you participants, you know, if uh, this specific category has any questions related to the program or in terms of enrollment or, you know, the application process or anything, please post your questions. I would answer them towards the end. Uh, yeah, Mukesh. Okay, let us try now because I think uh, I, I moved to another room where I have another different internet connectivity. So I hope that it's is better now. It's better. Okay, fine. Then let's start with these. So sorry about that, guys. Uh, sharing my screen now. I hope the screen is visible now. Uh, visible to me, participants. Just quickly let us know so we can, you know, proceed ahead. Yes, yes. Yeah. Perfect. So, uh, Shubha, I've already uh, uh, brief about my background. Uh, so, about 27 years of experience, and majority of my experience was building large-scale technology uh, and uh, data-driven product innovation. So, if you think, link, look at, you know, I'm sure in your current job, you might be using Outlook. I built Outlook 23 years back. And I also had the honor to write Microsoft's first ever AI algorithm during that time frame as well. So, throughout my experience, like 13 years at Microsoft, uh, two and a half years at Geo, and right now, four years at Capgemini, Always looking at it, how do I create a system which is used by millions of users, right? So now when you talk about top tech, com tech companies, what it takes to get there, that will be the focus for me for the today's session, what kind of questions are asked and what is the purpose of those questions? More than the questions, right? If you Google it, you will find all the questions. More than the question, I would focus on the purpose of the question so that you are fully prepared rather than just mugging up the answers for these te technical questions, right? Uh, after coming back to India uh, about 11 years back, I started teaching at IIT, IIMs, and up, upgrade. So now that's where I get excited about you know, sharing knowledge and coaching people to be able to help them in their career at various levels. I published two books, and I'm writing my third book now. So let's start with this, right? So we, we are always busy, or at least we think we are busy. And that's the challenge. That's the place where we, we end up you know, focusing on the, the immediate priorities in hand rather than looking at the long-term part of it, which is the career. The fact that all of you are spending this one hour with us, that clearly shows that you are interested to learn something more. Hopefully, I'll be able to give you some tips for, for your career as well. Let me spend a few seconds here. So as you can see, I'm sure you, you can relate to this. So this is what my experience has been. There are several times I got some advice. Some of the advice was not that great. And uh, it was interesting uh, in, the, in the year 1998, maybe some of you are not born at that time, 1998, uh, when my, one of my friend's brother got a job in Intel in US, I was fascinated by that. Like, wow, what it takes to get a job in Microsoft or Intel? Google, Facebook, he said, Mukesh, forget it. You can never get into Microsoft or Google. I said, uh, um, Microsoft or Intel. I said, why not? He said, no, Mukesh, you don't have this scale. You don't have that scale. You, do, you are not masters. You're not doing, doing this. A lot of things he mentioned. But come September 20, 1998, I applied and I got a job in Microsoft. Had I listened to my friend, I don't think I would have got a job in Microsoft. So be careful about whom you listen to, whom you get advice from. So that will be something a starting point for the session. So we are in the digital age. We always talk about the digital age and everything. So I think the digital age actually started probably about 20 years back, wherein, yes, there were few people only have access to internet, few people have access to the laptop and everything. But now, after 20 years later, 20 years back, it started getting more and more mainstream. And I would say last five years has been the significant one 
where your fingertips uh, information is at your fingertips and you have more choice now okay so if you look at the current business landscape we all have choice when you try to book ola if it doesn't work you go to uber but some but just imagine why is it not working maybe there's too much load on the server maybe the site have crashed maybe something else is happening right right the bugs the the challenge of scale is what matters and because of which a lot of this uh, in, in issues happen on the site and that's why they lose business they lose money big time because the expectation now from all of us is anytime anywhere on any device that is what the expectation is microsoft had this mantra for quite some time but now if you imagine imagine right you open your mobile phone and you are pretty much able to do anything and everything there right the whole understanding of usage understanding that is it reaching all this last part just now right few 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 minutes back i had a internet issue on one of one of the room but i had to change the room just to get there because i don't know even though i have two separate internet connection sometimes the issue may happen because my expectation is i should be do anytime anywhere any connection i should be able to do it right so growing need there is a growing need of tech driven innovation data driven innovation so organizations are more and more getting towards those getting towards automation getting towards technology part as well so the big tech companies will be when you are appearing for the interviews and all you need to have that mindset and i'm going to cover those mindset today in the in the session today and of course how do we compete compete with user experience compete with technology compete with data and that is what the expectation of all these companies so if you are able to tell them that yes you will be able to do this part no wonder you will be selected there now the important topic for today interviews so i'm going to do this exercise right so now we are 39 people so 37 people on the call so 37 people i'm going to show you a question write down few lines one two line in five is fine in comments i just want to see your thought process and then of course if you don't want to write that's fine too but if you write it on a pen and paper at least it will give you a good validation about how good you are how ready are you for these interviews okay and then of course as part of any of the feedback right i'm not going to check i'm not going to give you marks for this but yes as part of the output you will be able to uh, you will be able to validate whether are you aware of those or not okay i have six couple of question couple of hand raised i'll take them in few minutes so first and foremost you need to know where you're going if you don't know where you're going definitely uh, any road will go but then i see that several of you i mentioned that you probably want to get more and more crack the in job interviews and all definitely that will be a, this will be a good session for you but then yeah you have to be clear about what you want to get so here is a problem the problem on the screen is a very 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 simple problem the purpose of this slide is to show are you able to think in all the direction here is the problem the problem is you are supposed to write a software a small code which will accept three inputs three inputs side a side b and side 3 c do not worry about the triangle uh, angle and all those by the way just the three sides and then check if all the three sides are equal you call it equilateral you call it isosceles if any two sides are equal you call it right angle triangle if any two side makes a right angle you can use the tip which is a, a square equal to b square plus c square and all the combinations and scale in if none of the sides are equal as simple as that so if you can think about how would you write the code you can write any programming language any you want you can do anything normally this exercise is 15 minutes i'm not going to spend 15 minutes today on this call but you can just write down write down in the chat window how are you going to start and then we'll we'll focus on the next part of it and spend about 5 minutes on this in this session before we move forward so i see some of you have already put something on the chat let me just check those with my glasses i see okay Okay, what is session about? The session about how to is interview. Okay, fine, you got the answer. Anybody want to write down? How would you start? You can just write down English also is fine. The first is accept the inputs. How are you going to determine its equilateral or isosceles or right angle triangle or scalene triangle? Write down your answer thoughts. Okay. None of you are writing. Okay, make use of the variable and use if function. Okay, fine. Rakesh, good start. You will have three three variables a, b, and c. You will accept those part and you will write a, a function. We will accept the input. We will use if if else function. Very good. With function. Okay. 
if else function so if else function how are you going to do the first statement of if can somebody write down the first if statement first if statement start with first if we will go to else and else if little later just if first if if side a equals side b okay then we pull that uh, uh, input a b c okay fine if side a equal to uh, dipika i don't think any programming law language supports this if side 1 the double equal to side 2 double equal to side 3 uh, if maybe there is some programming language supporting that but uh, that's a good answer dipika if that works perfect uh, if this is this, this, then I uh, run Python is simple run thing because we use three function and then the loop. If a equal to b equal to c, then write equilateral. Fine. Double equal to I mean. Okay, fine. If a is less than zero, very good answer. Shubhakanta, right? This is the error condition. Nobody nobody thought about it. In a, it's a triangle. The values cannot be zero or negative. So, yes, Shubhakanta have put a good answer there. Yeah, Ramya have put in if a equal to b. Okay, fine, Ramya. What is the next step there? C follows this. Okay, thanks. Uh, okay, okay. So you got the basics at least. How are you start? I'm going to start. But if you all thought about check A equal to B or B, uh, and B equal to C and C equal to A, okay, then it's the wrong answer. Why? You don't need to do three checks. You only need to do two checks. A equal to B and B equal to C. Or you can do a check like this, A equal to B and C equal to A. Any of them will result the same because if it's equal, it will result the same. But the important part is, if you do this part, if it fails, you're going to check again for isosceles, right? Which means you are repeating the step again. Better could be what uh, Ramya mentioned, just check for A equal to B. Answer could be yes or no. If yes, then check again for B equal to C or C equal to A. But if it is no, then you are doing it. So what you are doing is you are actually creating branches and reducing the number of uh, checks you want to do to be able to find out if it's equilateral or isosceles. Yes, this kind of question, this kind of optimization is expected for big tech companies. Yes, you can. You, you have all the resources in the world. You have your laptop. You have all the uh, 16 GB RAM available, 8 GB RAM available. You can write whatever you want, right? It will not, it a fraction of a second it doesn't make a difference. But when you're building a product like Outlook and you're building a large product like Geo, definitely every every byte, every every extra code is actually not good. So that's why you'll need to optimize, and that's what is expected from Google, Microsoft, Meta, Uber, Tesla kind of interviews. Can you write good software code? Okay. So let's say and this is the piece of creator. Okay. Uh, Pritham probably yeah, that's the right. But then we can use if we can split all of them. If a equal to b. Then next, if a B equal to C, and then you can do branching and then do it, that is better answer you will get. Now comes the most interesting part. After you write the code, we're going to skip the coding part. So you got the basic idea, but you most of you are only talking about equilateral. Then of course you will write the isosceles, right angle, all we'll talk about all those. Uh, hopefully you will be able to write those in future. But let's talk about this next one. After you write the code, write test cases to test it. Now you can write the test cases and I'm going to just make it easier for you. Okay. I'm going to write the test cases like this. Three, three, three. Answer is equilateral. Okay. I want you to write all the possible test cases here. Remember the word, all possible test cases. You cannot repeat the test case. I said three, 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 four, four, four. E is the repeat. You cannot write the, uh, the, the same test case just by changing the value, but you need to cover all possible combinations. Write down the test cases. I want to see who can write this, this unique te test cases. So you might be not noticing, right? I'm going to going for software development. Why should I write the test cases? But for these top companies, right now with the agile thing and everything and all, you definitely need to write very good test, good code so it works on the, the the fact that you're understanding the test cases that actually shows that you understood the scope. You understood the understood the problem rather than just writing the code, which 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 some of you would have would have written, right? That is the purpose. What are the test cases? We are going to enter and we'll, we'll all recording webinar share. Okay. What are the questions? What are the test cases you want to check? I given two inputs. Let me give you one more. I think people are okay. Fine. Okay. Okay. Not not enough, Deepika. We need lot more. 
three, four, five will be right angle triangle. I gave you one more test case. By the way, Deepika, just check one, two, three. What do you expect out output? I just put the output on the right side. And some of the test cases are invalid. You can just put invalid in there or I, I at the end of it. This is an interesting one, by the way. As you can see, it is a very, very simple problem. This is not, not going deep into cloud, not going deep into any of the technology. It's very, very simple problem just to see if your basics are clear. We're going to cover those parts. Another two minutes and then I'll move to the next slide. Deepika, if you can post the same thing what you have posted with the, with the output expected at each one of them, it'll be interesting. It'll be good. We can discuss, I think, one or two test cases and then we'll move forward. Okay, anybody? Okay. Uh, okay. Isosceles, the, 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 the scaling, so four, five, six scaling, right angle zero to two, uh, equilateral T6, an uh, error. Okay, uh, equilateral right angle four, five, six. Okay, I don't think four, five, six is going to be right angle triangle. Uh, sp uh, Spurti, four, five, six is not a right angle triangle. And zero to two will never make a triangle. So those are two mistakes there. Yeah, last one is an error, which is okay. Four, four, four. Please write down what is expected. Comma E for equilateral, I for isosceles, R for right angle. It will be easy. Otherwise, I just see the numbers. That doesn't make sense. Okay, let's 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 take each one of them now. So what Deepika has mentioned, one, two, three. One, two, three will never make a triangle. Okay. Then let's look at it. What Pritham I mentioned. Pritham I mentioned second test case. Three three six. Three three six will never make a triangle. Okay. Three two five will never make a triangle. Okay. One 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 zero one two not valid input. Do, 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 do. So you have spent more time on valid and invalid input. And by the way, uh, Prasan two two four will never make a triangle. Okay. Not good. Yes. Very good people. Check if the sum of two sides. Excellent answer. So this is how you want to be a little bit more particular about it, right? So I'm going to write down and, I, and I just don't think that it's obvious, but it's important, right? I'm going to write down some more test cases so you get an idea about it. Let's say I'm putting this, okay. Three, two, three, I, three. Two, three, two, I. Three, four, five, R. Four, three, five, R. Five, four, three, R. Seven, nine, eleven, S. Okay. Now look at it. Some of you had mentioned uh, scaling. Some of you have done the right angle triangle. But have you noticed our isosceles triangle? We have three test cases. Most of you have only done one, right? Three test cases, A equal to B. Second test case, B equal to C. Third test case, C equal, A equal to C. All these are separate test cases. It cannot be same. That's why they're all possible combinations. Why? Because you could have write, written a mistake. You could have done a mistake that if A equal to B, uh, isosceles triangle and you forgot about B equal to C, we forgot about A equal to C. This is how all the software bugs happen, by the way. Okay. I hope this was useful. Let me move on to the next slide. This level of detail is required. Uh, I, let, let, that remind me. Let me just add a funny incident and then I'll move forward. I was at one of the IITs. I will not name the IIT. And I was going there for recruitment. And I asked uh, this question. The person from IIT said he was in the fourth year, just beginning of the final year. He said, are you sure? This is a very simple question. I said, yeah, it's sure. Oh, I am from IIT. You should ask a difficult question for me. I said, fine, at least crack this. He was not able to crack. Okay. So what, what, what did we learn here? The situation, the task and the action and the results. The situation was triangle. We need to find out what the output is. Have you noticed the requirement? Look at this. Let me just put it here. And these are something which is expected pen. Now look at this. Where is my pen? Yeah, these two one. Of course, there are a lot more test cases. Any two sides are equal, which means even this number, even this number three, three, 
थ्री इज नॉट जस्ट इक्विलेटरल इट इज ऑल्सो एसोसिलस बिकॉज ऑफ दिस स्टेटमेंट राइट डीड एनी थॉट अबाउट दैट राइट सो नाउ द क्वेश्चन इज आई वी सपोज टू प्रिंट बोथ आई वी सपोज टू प्रिंट वन और आई वी आर गोइंग टू गिव एन एर वॉट इज एक्सपेक्टेड सो यू आस्क क्वेश्चन अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड स्कोप दैट्स वॉट यू डू सिचुएशन एंड टास्क यू आस्क क्वेश्चन Also, we all know that the isosceles right angle, tri isosceles triangle, where is it here? Yeah, isosceles triangle and the right angle. It's possible to have both of them, right? Uh, a right angle triangle can also be, also be isosceles triangle. So, how would you that look like? That will look like this, same, like this. Okay. So, all this combination has to be understood before you give a you give a response. Okay. Now, think about it. Did you understood the scope? did you ask any anybody ask clarifying question nobody asked clarifying questions what 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 would be the use of this code why are we doing this okay what about data now think about it we all used only only integers why why not double why not floor why not decimals nobody said that the triangle only has to be integers one of you mentioned uh, error checking which was the uh, less than uh, or equal to zero one of you also mentioned about uh, sum of two sides should always be greater than the, uh, the other side right those are really really good points okay quality checks did we do that performance how would we perform optimization dolin domain knowledge do we need mathematics knowledge maybe maybe not but at least the basics when you are writing it down it should be there so let me take some questions i see some questions now i am doing my mechanical engineering but i want to learn programming what do i do so kailash normally if if you are chosen mechanical engineering you were thought about doing mechanical engineering and that's why you chose on right but the, now you want to change it that's possible to do it you need to do more programming classes and everything you need to learn that's how you will be able to do programming but but you have to also ask yourself what was the main reason for doing mechanical engineering in the first place it's okay it's never too late but you can you can enroll in a course and then learn more about programming next question how do you prepare for devops interview and how do you pre prepare resume for devops role akilesh devops uh, cannot be like you know so once you learn devops applying those part and then uh, putting on the resume is definitely doable but the understanding has to be there devops development and operations together how well you can write the code and deploy how do you do ci cd continuous integration continuous deployment so that it can work uh, seamlessly for the organization do you have to restart the machine like think about it amazon does deployment every few minutes on their site 1800 any moment of time experiments are running deployments are going on on amazon side in a day now imagine if that is a the case then we don't shut down okay fine i will shut down and reboot after i do deployment no you do ci cd if something doesn't work you pull it out those are some of the experience you will learn on ci uh, devops but then the question would be are you getting into entry level role or or not once you understand you will be putting the resume in the resume you can highlight that how you did it in your company what all you were able to achieve how you were able to optimize the code uh, how you reduce the ci cd pipeline and all in the year 2000 in the year 2000 22 years back i built something similar to devops in microsoft microsoft at that time used to take more than one month to create one build and restarting the machine having the user administrative privilege for the machine all those challenges were there at microsoft so we were able to bring this part my goal was to bring it down to 15 minutes i did not achieve 15 minutes it took me 3 months to come down to 1 hour but but able to get it down so that there is a there is a rigor in the part and everything now we call it devops but that is how it was done long time back as well okay thank you akilesh for the question uh, nikhil have a question uh, how many languages have been are we known for an interview uh, nikhil i don't think you require multiple languages in fact uh, it was interesting because microsoft when i was interviewing they the interview the position was for c++ i had zero knowledge about c++ I told them, sorry, I don't know C plus plus. I only know C. They took the full interview on C. When I joined Microsoft, day one I was working on C plus plus. So it's not the number of interview. As you saw, right? The interview question I asked you about triangle. You did not need to do any language. You can just write the code in the pseudo language the way you want to do it. Okay. So it's not about the languages. But yes, nowadays the most common languages is uh, still Java in the software engineering world, uh, Python in the data science world, and slowly we are seeing Python being adopted everywhere across as well. so that's what we will be doing but at the same time if you are going for a technical interview for a top companies the interview will be in c c++ just be ready for those my son just got selected into an internship and his full interview was in c++ so definitely java is good 
for application development and so on. But for product companies, top companies, it will still be C++. I want to become a software engineer. Uh, definitely, normally it's good to you know, go through the course and then you'll be able to get into software engineering. Okay. Fine. Okay, uh, Pradeep, I see your answers. One two one is not an isosceles triangle. One 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 two is not an isosceles triangle. But this will never form a triangle. Try to draw it yourself. It will never form a triangle. Okay. One two one is is not a tri and scaling triangle either. So just look at the answers one more time. Try try it. Out. It will not work. Uh, can I interview? Uh, I am learning. Uh, can I interview for a tech company? Isha, definitely, right? So, in fact, uh, I encourage people when they are still learning to do the interviews. You get a good validation, and in case you something you are not able to clear, they will always think that okay, fine, you are still learning, so you get a benefit of doubt as well. So, I encourage a lot of people to do interviews while they are still learning, but be careful, right? Don't just go and do interview, uh, but then at least be ready with the data structures. So, I'm going to cover those part in few minutes now. Okay, good discussion, good 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 questions and all. Let me jump to the other part. There are some Concepts I want to just share so that you are you are clear about those. So when I talk about interview, right? What is the interview? It's a structured process. Getting to know each other, each other. Remember that part. Each other is more important, right? Okay. They will check your proven capability. Proven. What have you done? So for people from college, you are still working, studying in the college. Then there's that not much you can show proven capability. But then what they will do? They'll see what have you have written on the resume. In the resume you have done, you are a lead or organize this event. Fine. Tell me more about the event. Are you in the thing? In the thing you read, write down. I've written these five algorithms. Okay, tell me more about algorithm. Just something you to have the conversation. But the important focus would be the potential. Can this person come and do something for me? Can the person? Does the person have the right thought, knowledge and thought process of doing it? Always remember, it's in my companies like Microsoft, Google, Meta, and all those things, it's not just what you know. It's the potential what matters the most over there because they are hiring for long term and not for the immediate project. That's why some of the small company will do. They just want to hire you for the immediate project. They have a need. They hire. If the need is over, then you may some some people may not even have a job. That's what happens with it. But from big companies, it's a potential. Do you have a managerial skill? May not be required for zero to five years experience. But if you after five years, are you able to manage people? Now think about it. If the, if I was saying I want to be individual contributor, yes, you can be individual contributor. Microsoft, Google for long term as well. But as a company, we always look at it. Right? You know, what is the value you are bringing as an individual contributor? Yes, you are doing some good coding, but I can get the same coding than with two years experience, three years experience, five years experience. In that case, why would you? Why would I pay you forty lakh rupees, sixty lakh rupees, one crore rupees? They will not. But if you say you are a manager, you can groom twenty people. Then they say yes, I am getting more value from you and not just a coding output. That's what is also important. And in the interview, just remember it's one or two chance to get it right. If you don't do it, they say it's a sampling exercise, not much, right? But there is no other option there. How would you prove that you are the best one for this interview? So yes, you could. You will do some online uh, test and everything. Then you go for interview. They'll uh, do it. If you do more practice, it's better for you. Now let's go to the next slide. So what do you expect? The first and foremost, the the biggest, biggest, biggest important part for any tech company: data structures and algorithm. Top tech company, I'm talking about, right? If you are going for a small company, you they ask your Java coding question. How how does this uh, overloading work? How does this uh, inheritance work? Couple of questions, and then you are in the company. But for big big company, they will be focus emphasize very much on data structures, algorithm. They'll give you problem. I have a link list. You want to do this part? I have this thing list. You want to do this? All these technical question or logical question they want to see. Are you clear in your data structures and algorithm? Can you write optimize and perform and code? The example we talked about, right? The triangle. How would you write a perform and code? And by the way, when you interview for the tech companies, they will not give you computer. They'll ask, they'll give you whiteboard and say, okay, fine, write it down on the code, right? So at that time, you have limited time to think. You only have ten minutes, fifteen minutes to write the code. So be careful and be be ready to do those part, right? Are you having commitment and accountability? So whatever you do, right? How do you position yourself? This question are a little tricky for for uh, anybody with eight plus years experience. They ask, tell me about a failure, and they say, yeah, this has happened and everything and all. And they, okay, fine. They will try to understand. Are you taking ownership of the failure or not? So those are some of the things they will ex ex expect. Passion for excellence, right? Do you do you really go for excellence, or you just do uh, the the namesake part of it? Are you honest? Do you do continuous learning? What are the new things you have learned? So so I don't know if you have noticed. I I did my masters uh, just uh, four years back. So I did my uh, engineering almost twenty seven years back, and then masters now. People are asking me why are you doing it now? I said no, why not? I want to learn. 
I want to continue to learn. That continuous learning is always important. Try for results. Just saying that, hey, I, I did my work is not, not enough. You need to show the results as well. And of course, quality focus. Are you writing the quality code? Are you writing the, all the checks and everything right from the beginning? All of those things. Team player, of course, is important. And are you thinking big? These are some of the expectations from the tech big companies. Let me go further. This is the most simple question, most interesting question. Everybody is aware of that. And still 90% of the people make blunder in this. Tell me about yourself. It's the simplest question possible. Each one of you, when you're going for interview, write down the script. Script. Yes, I'm saying script in a Word document and practice. You know what my experience has been? I said, tell me about yourself. My name is this. Uh, my father is doing this. I have one brother, one sister. Uh, I'm working at this company. In the past, I worked in this company. I did my engineering in this. And all this information is already available in your resume. Tell me something different. Tell me something more. Tell me about yourself, right? So think from that angle, right? What do you, what would you say? Hey, my name is this part. I, in my 27 years experience, I've done this, 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 this. I'm always passionate about this part. And that's why I, I work on this part. The fact that I'm, I'm on discussing with you because I want to get into this role and so on. So if you talk in that language, they say, wow, the person is passionate. The person is telling me more about it. And highlight those elements where, why you want to that job. Because the next question is going to be, why should I hire you, right? Tech company ask this question, top tech companies, not necessarily a small company because they say, okay, why should I hire you? Because you want to see, are you really passionate to join and work for a large company like that, right? So what they do, they look at the combination of these four items. Do you have ambition? Are you thinking big? Who are your role models? Okay. Are you setting a goal for yourself? Do you have a plan for your career? Where do you see yourself in three years? Where do you see yourself in five years? What's your growth look like? Do you have a coach? Aptitude, your data structures is good or not? Your knowledge about how things work, right? The learning, the problem solving skill, all of those things are important. So for example, somebody will say, hey, uh, we need to have uh, this problem of traffic in your city. How would you solve? Can you quickly come up with an idea of how you'll create an application, mobile app, and then do it something on those? I just saw an ad on Google wherein somebody said uh, uh, climate change and she created an app for that. Why not, right? Are you able to solve problems like that on the fly? How would that work? Uh, I remember in 2005 when I was working for Microsoft in Hyderabad for, for a short stint, uh, uh, potholes were the big problem in the city. Mumbai had this problem and I think pretty much all the cities uh, have this problem of potholes. Uh, even in Bangalore, once the water recedes, we will see if there are pothole problems. Now the pothole problems, how do you find out? So we created a small app. People may just have to keep in their pocket. And when they move around in rickshaw or bike or something, based on the vibration, based on the thing, they will know that there was a pothole there. And then map it with lat long location. Okay. So like this, can you come up with a solution on the fly, problem solving solution using technology, right? Those are something which they expect. They'll ask you any random question. Some of you might be interested. What questions were asked for me during my interview at Microsoft? They asked me a question. How would you test it was a developer role, but the question was, how would you test a chair? And my first answer was, what kind of chair are you talking about? Are you talking about a chair which is used by a small kid? Are you talking about an office chair? Are you talking about a dinner chair? Are you talking about a chair used in the aircraft? Or are you talking about a chair which is used for a dentist? Or we're talking about a wheelchair wherein somebody without a moving capability is able to do. Okay, so I asked so many questions. And since you're not given me any, any response, I'm going to take an example of an office chair. <clears throat> then I started giving answers. How I do this, how I do this and all those. So that, that thinking for any problem, that shows the detail oriented you are there. Okay. The next category is assertive. How things work. Now each one of you ask question to yourself. How does Google map work? How does Google know that it will take 25 minutes from here to there? Think about it. And the same Google map in the evening will show High traffic. Same Google map will show in the night that yeah, well, you can go there in 10 minutes only. How does Google map know all of those parts? Knowing that is important. Not just Google map, anything else. How do you come up with the new ideas? How, what do you do in investigation part? Do you challenge? How do you ask question? And most important, your attitude. Are you continuously learning? Are you professional in the way you speak? Do you have confidence? Are you positive in your language? leadership skill and the most important the last one quick versus perfection quick versus perfection 
Okay. So now look at this is the area where a uh, lot of people struggle. Some people go for perfection, which is which is definitely good long term. Yes, but sometimes you need quick. So for example, I say, yeah, give me ten years and I'll build the perfect software for you. Nobody have time for that. Compared to somebody, yeah, I'll build something for you. But then if you you will lose the market share because the quality was poor, it's a challenge. So creating something quick and then showing the market MVP, we call it a minimum viable product, and then getting some feedback and continuously innovating on those. The startup mindset and all those parts. Okay. So one of the thing on attitude side where I want to emphasize a little bit more is for anything, raise your hand. Are you that kind of a person who will always raise hand? Yes, I'll do it. Even if, if, if you're having that mindset, talk about that in the interview that I, I, I volunteered that I took the responsibility and do it. The push name is the attitude in English. There's no harm in asking, right? Those things also will be ready that the curious, I'm curious mindset. I learn how things work and so on. And I'm able to understand analytics. I'm able to use data. I'm able to use technology. And I'm able to think like an entrepreneur, like a, like a, like an owner. Okay. So tech product have evolved. You would have noticed the old, old products. Uh, this is a very old slide, 18 year old slide, by the way, that time the phone model was like this at that time, the basic necessity was the must have. Cano was the scientist who came up with this model. We said there are always items which are like must have There are items which are like more. I want There are things which are delight, like, wow. And there are items which are dissatisfied. So over a period of time, all of those becomes your must have. The technology innovation continues and things which we're saying at that time, wow, you can do email on the phone. Yes, that was the wow factor 18 years back. Okay. Now we don't no longer say that. We don't even ask for those, right? The wow factor is no longer there. There's some other wow factor, of course. Okay. So idea, right? Uh, are you thinking positively with the idea, right? Do you, do, do you have ideas that you... Uh, uh, believe in the idea and then you are thinking beyond a programmer, you are thinking about an engineer, uh, how do you, what do you do with after visiting Microsoft, Google or Facebook site, do you learn something from, from those sites, uh, startup ideas, if somebody asks you, add two new features in WhatsApp, can you do that right away? Can you think about those ideas, right? Definitely those are something which is expected about the person. Okay. How things work, I, I already talked about it, right? Uh, also think, ask, ask, uh, ask yourself, right? How would the technology solution work? I have a point here to make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven point. Aadhaar. If somebody asks you, there are duplicates in Aadhaar, duplicate, not the Aadhaar number, the person, the same person I've got to Aadhaar number. I want to find out. Think about it. What would be the logic to find that out? Okay. Assuming, assuming 1.3 billion people have Aadhaar right now. Are you going to do 1.3 billion checks? Think about it one more time. The person could have written the same name, a uh, different name, by the way. How would you check that? And there are two people who will have same name anyways. Biometrics and all this, right? So those are the questions they will ask you. Just to understand, how, how do you think on the feet? How do you write your more op most optimized algorithm? The data structures and algorithm is what, what they are referring to here. Okay? And then, of course, how do you stay updated, right? The latest tech technology blog, tech crunch, MIT Coursera, YouTube, a lot of those things are there. So they will actually ask you, what tech blog have you recently read? What is the new technology article you have you seen? You, you need to talk about those as well, by the way. Okay. So now let's talk about, wow, what an animation. I don't know how I got there. Okay. Emerging technology. So they will, they will definitely DevOps is the top one. And I saw some people have already asked this question on DevOps part of it. How does virtual supermarket work? How do you really they stock, stock it? How do you they maintain the stock? Okay. RFID, smart shelf. How does that goes really work? Um, machine to machine or uh, IoT, blockchain, quantum computing, artificial uh, augmented reality, virtual reality. How, how are these things coming up and then uh, shaping up the uh, area? So you should be aware of all those part of it. Okay. Now when you're doing practice, how would you do it? Right. So the first and the foremost part is programming, programming, programming. You need to write code. You need to write a good code to do programming. I would encourage you to do participate in programming competition, which actually shows you how fast you wrote the code, how optimized your code was to be able to crack it. But of course, if you do basic programming, definitely you can get into some smaller companies. But for big companies, you will have to know a lot more. Okay. Uh, so tell me about yourself, right? This is the question where we are talking about marketing yourself very well. So that is what is important. You need to have that marketing mindset that uh, the, you, need to, you need to be able to tell about yourself. How different are you? How different are you from your friend? Uh, do you write a blog and paper? Are you, are you taking pride in your awards and recognition? So then you go, oh, we are boasting ourselves. No, it's not about boasting yourself. It is about telling that I, 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 I admire. It is telling that I love uh, recognition. 
and this is what I have a recognition. That you have shown the leadership also, right? Cloud. So some of the basics on cloud. How things work. Do you even know the basics of the cloud? You may not have certification. Perfectly fine. But search for those. How cloud works. How Azure work. How AWS work. Is it really profitable to go on cloud? Normally the answer is yes. The answer is no. It is a lot more costly to go on the cloud. But what are the benefits of cloud? So all those things has to be taken into consideration while talking about those. Yes, more and more companies are moving towards cloud. Okay, even though this is costly, but then the benefit you get is a lot more better than having it on prem. DevOps part again, user experience, right? How is how is uh, you know the app being very easy for people? The question you will get asked in that interview is, tell me the best user experience app you have you seen? Would you be able to answer those part? Think about all the four, five, seven, ten apps you have seen. And by the answer is not WhatsApp. WhatsApp is the worst user experience uh, in WhatsApp. Okay, there are a lot of things I, I, you know, I keep giving feedback to the WhatsApp team that this is about how you can improvise further. Code review. Do you understand the code review? How the code review will done? What is the importance of code review? Testing, right? Importance of testing. Unit testing, writing the test cases, all of those parts. Okay. So one of the things uh, on the on the on the on the technology side, right? The optimization, the big O notation will also be important because they might ask you. If you're writing this code, is it going to be n n n factorial? Is it going to be n square? What? How much is the complexity of the code? We go we go notation and all those things happens there. Okay. And last couple of slides. Solving problem. Solving problem will be essentially to look at like how how do you like for example they may give you business situation. Okay. How are you going to gain more user for me? Okay. How are you going to get better ROI for user? The user comes in only once once in a week. What can you do to attract more more this part? How can we reduce attrition? Okay, user are trending down. How would you do this? Okay, all the specific questions they will ask just to understand your mindset about how do you solve it. Some of you at the junior level may not get this question because they think you are still uh, learning. But yeah, they will ask you if you have done some startup, if you are doing some interesting work, they might ask you still ask you this question. And the last question is how handling awkward question, and this is a very interesting one. If you have a break in jobs or studies, they'll ask you. And sometimes you say, okay, well, if you want to come into computers, but why did you do mechanical? Why did you do MBA? Those kind of questions will also be awkward. Okay. Tell me about something. Like that. Tell me about quantum computing. Tell me about uh, serverless computing. Tell me about cloud. Be ready to answer those. Even though the job may not require, they're just trying to test. Are you even reading articles? That's what they're looking at it. What are weakness? This is a very interesting one. What are weakness? And it is very tricky question. You are supposed to talk about your weakness, but don't talk uh, obviously obvious ones. Don't don't uh, don't talk the obvious answers. But yeah, be be genuine. At the same time, you don't want to spill like, "Hey, I'm I'm too stubborn." Uh, no, you cannot talk about those weaknesses, which which will land you this. Your choice. You you can be honest, but talk about the weakness where you can show it as a strength going forward. Right? I sometimes work very hard, and uh, I need to slow down on those part. Other, I'll burn myself. That's my weakness. Sometimes I, I very very particular. I go in more details. Sometimes it takes longer time than maybe that's a weakness. Okay, okay. And the last part question is: Do you have any question for me? This is the interesting one question, right? I've seen people asking me, "Mukesh, what's the office timing? Why are they asking office timing as a question? Or do you have to work a weekend also? Do you have to work uh, more than nine hours? Will there be travel involved? Those are all no no questions. Why no no? Because the fact that you're asking the time, which means you are reluctant to work late. So I'll be thinking, yeah, once in a while we have hard work. People work late. Looks like the person is not not interested. So people may be negative around those. So be careful about those. So in conclusion, if you look at the technology, right, the artificial intelligence, internet of things, mobile, social, blockchain, all of them are powered by technology. This technology does not exist without technology. So you are you are you are going to be in software. You will be writing the software which will power any of this technology. There are all of them are there by the way. Okay, and the expectation. The expectation is: Are you able to leverage technology for business value? Are you curious? Okay, and are you thinking software will have defects, or are you more and more going towards not having defects? How would you write code? Does your code your help your defects as well? All those things are expected at the top companies. The reason I'm emphasizing more on the top company is because once you crack it, and that that's what the purpose of this one big tech companies for the session today. But if you if you are ready for those. You can easy to get any any job, but why not Microsoft, right? Think about it. Everybody is hiring. Why not Microsoft? Why not Google? Why not Meta? Why not Tesla? Why not Uber? If you want to get that, definitely you need to be a lot more ready there. 
and there are of course some other financial institution the algorithmic trading uh, high frequency trading all of those thing comes there right writing prof- optimized performance scalable code is very very important are you, and your understanding of api cloud devops is definitely important how things were again as i mentioned i cannot emphasize enough you need to know how any of the technology works when you click the button how what happens when you do this part how happens and all those and continuously coming up with the ideas new ideas and other thing will be important and upskilling uh, i like this phrase called jack of all trade master of some you know everything and you are master in one area that is what will get you the job okay my personal experience i always uh, focus on puchne mein kya jata hai there is no harm in asking and also i've done personally the new idea is crank until the idea succeed and of course you cannot have uh, be just having actions uh, without results so those are some of the things i have by learning and uh, of course there are lots of them but i'll just focus on those i'm going to pause now give it back to you if you have any question i see three questions there let me take answer those questions uh amarnath amarnath uh, is saying he working in a service company joined a product company amarnath very good point most of the hiring happens in microsoft in india is from a service company only okay that's perfectly fine but the, the example i gave you the tips i gave you if you can just follow those amarnath you should be just fine you should be able to get that microsoft normally if you are doing rigorous planning for those Three months is what is required after you go through the course. Go through the course, understand all the fundamentals of programming, DevOps, and so on, and then get get into the product based part. Thirteen years experience, M Tech CS, high degree. Currently pursuing DBA in technical. Come here, I am asking competitive. I will be after two years or after fifteen years experience. Okay, so Vipul Tiwari is asking the question: Will I be eligible for CTO role? So Vipul, definitely the experience you have is great, and with doctorate degree and everything, definitely it will be easier for you to get there. Uh, the only point I would say is Vipul, as, as a CTO, right? There will be three things you will be expected from you. Three, three, three questions. Three things. One is tech horsepower, which I see that you are already already there. Second part on the business acumen to do you understand the business, how technology will solve business problem. Fifteen uh, years is a good time to get into the CXO role. Uh, CTO role would definitely will be a good one. And the third one is on the people side of it. How are you enabling a culture of, of innovation in the organization? Okay, thanks, people, for the question. Next question is: I am doing MBA and I am learning R Studio. Uh, what type of company should I interview? So, Isha, uh, if you are doing already MBA and learning R Studio, uh, you, it's the company. Any company, any tech company requires people from technology, some people from data science, a few people from a business analyst as well with the MBA background. So, you are doing two things. MBA plus I don't know your technical uh, engineering background or graduation background, but MBA and R Studio is a good combination for you to get into a company for a uh, so business analyst uh, related to analytics project. That could be a good start for for you. Uh, if you learn the DevOps part of it and all, you could be business analyst for a software project for a mobile app development project also. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think there is a, a question in the chat window. One second. yeah okay i see some question there okay uh, data science interview okay uh, what would be the best way to improve programming skill mm-hmm. ramya the best way to improve programming skill would be participating in online competition so once you go through the course you you go to the competition and participate it's okay to be uh, more than 100 rank in the first few competition target yourself to be the top in the top 5 that's the best way to improve a programming skill I can tell you, majority of the project people who are want to get into Microsoft and Google have to do this. In fact, there's a there's a question they ask: send me your profile on Hacker Rank. Tell me your profile on the Link profile, wherein they will come and check your score. And if you if you're not at the top top performer, you'll be challenged. By the way, if you're a student and if you're still learning, uh, top 500 people uh, scorer gets into my uh, Google internship directly. Top 500. Okay, if you are in some of those ranking. Uh, uh in google uh, hack hack code or some some something is a good code code for good and all those program you need to be on top 500 globally i am a banking sector looking at transition software how to uh, uh, into upgrade data science i will help you in my career uh, so uh, shriram i think uh, banking sector definitely is the one who is one of the on the forefront both on the shriram reddy shriram reddy uh, both in terms of the software and in terms of data analytics as well Uh, so you definitely there are a lot of innovation need to happen. The blockchain is a big innovation going to happen there. Uh, but the, most of the banks are still struggling with DevOps. 
So DevOps is the major one you will be able to get into the banking sector right now, uh, and then hopefully after the the law of in, in India of data privacy law in India get uh, get live, some of the changes will happen on the banking side, insurance side, telecom side. That's why a lot of new jobs will will emerge because of that. Okay, I'm doing MCA from Tier Three College. Am I eligible for SC Road? Uh, Yogesh, uh, normally Microsoft. For experienced people, do not look at the difference between MC or BE or something. But yes, uh, initially it might see. So if you are currently doing from the tier three college, definitely Microsoft will not work for you for next five years at least. But I think I would suggest go for a smaller company, start gain those knowledge, keep an eye on Microsoft, continue to practice your coding and skill and all. I can tell you in Microsoft, I had a couple of people who are from who are one one of one of them was BCom by the way. Okay, uh, your MCA definitely you have a lot more chance, but only after you prove yourself. If you are in student engineering computer science IT, my guess is yeah, computer science IT he will know, she will know. They will just still take it. But if you are from MCA background, they may not right away take you. Yeah. Also, Mukesh, there are uh, some questions that I see. So there is one question from uh, Shubhakanta. Yeah. I am enrolling into the full stack uh, development course in upgrad. Is it enough to get a job in big tech companies? So I would just like you know you to give like an industry perspective here. Yeah. So over a period of time, right? Initially, the roles were very, very particular. Everybody was programmer. Then the roles started dividing. You are a programmer, you are a developer, and so on. But that's where the friction started between the teams. That's where the full new new terminology, full stack developer, came in about twelve years back. And with this with this terminology, full stack developer means you understand everything and you are able to do this justice to them. So definitely, full stack developer is the way to go, and it is expected. It is expected in any tech company, uh, big tech company, they will ask for full stack developers only any days nowadays. Right. So Shubhakanta, very direct answer to your question would be yes. Uh, you know, it is definitely going to be helpful for you. So if you're enrolling into the program, just go ahead and do that. And I'm definitely looking forward to see you on board. So yeah, thank you so much. Um, next question that we have is from uh, Akhilesh. Uh, he has posted this question in the chat. Uh, who to prepare best resume for freshers and for the role of DevOps? It's how to prepare. Yeah. So I think the the I, I answered the question earlier. Right? If you have done some practice, definitely you will be able to talk about those things on the DevOps part of, part of it. Focus on the understanding of the DevOps and then talking about it, how it solves the problem of uh, multiple people writing code, how it solves the problem of uh, uh, reducing the number of uh, code, code issues on the CI, CD, how fast can you develop. If you emphasize on those part of it in your resume, that clearly shows that you have done a lot more than DevOps. And of course, the technology part, the Jenkins, the Ansible, and other things which have to be talked about. Right. Uh, it's already eight, but you know, I'm still going to take this one question, which is related to interviews, which is from Spurti. What is the best way to answer? Do you have any questions for me? I think, Mukesh, you gave like what to not ask. Negative, what to answer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So normally, I'll, I'll recommend this part. So this is uh, the question. Always be prepared with this question. And I have two questions ready. And uh, before you go for the interview, let's say you have an interview with, let's say, Microsoft. Okay. Uh, understand from all the news, if, uh, what all news uh, have coverage of Microsoft in the last one week, two weeks. And then see wherever Microsoft will talk about a technology, wherever Microsoft will talk about some challenges or some some issues or something. Understand those pieces and then go to the interview by saying, you know, ask this question in, in just one second. In the interview, ask this question that, you know, hey, I, I was going through the news and I saw this, this part of it. This is really good. This is really amazing. Microsoft is doing. I would like to know more. What is the Microsoft strategy? How would Microsoft normally do this? So that shows three things. First, it shows that you are, you are active. You are looking at news. Second, you're bold, you ask questions. And third, third one, you're genuinely curious to be able to understand more. So these three things will always give you positive spiel, irrespective of what the answer is. You probably don't even care about the answer, right? But that, that shows your, your maturity and then things about you asking questions compared to uh, when the raise happened, when the performance review happened, uh, what is the timing of this, what are the benefits, do you have insurance? All these questions are no, no, complete no, no. Okay. Uh, one last question, I think, yeah. which is from anonymous attendee. Uh, uh, Mukesh, if you can take very quick. If yeah. you are hiring a developer to write code for a SaaS platform, how to manage access to that code? Uh, SaaS platform, okay. How to manage access to that code, okay. Uh, so, uh, the, the way it happens is all this code, what you are writing, right? It is all, uh, if you are doing SaaS, SaaS, SaaS stands for software as a service. The code is written, nowadays the code is written in serverless computing. So your code, code is there someplace. It is not a dedicated server. 
and that's where you will be writing code and uh, managing is role role with excel so who have access to the code and everything uh, who can change the code uh, normally in agile team anybody can change the code but everything at log even when if you put a full stop and if you put an enter those can log the who all have made the changes so that's why you will be able to manage the access to the code and so on and normally in the reports uh, in the in the git repository and all it will can see who has all made changes in the code in fact, i run this report regularly to see how is the contribution of each of the person that also shows me if somebody has not checked in their code to get to idea at the same time if somebody has checked in poor quality code i can find that out as well even though 10 people are working on the same code Right, great. So I think this was helpful. Thank you so much, Mukesh, and thank you so much all the participants for joining us today. I hope the session was interesting, helpful, and enlightening. And you know, we were able to make this one hour productive for you. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Mukesh, for joining. And you know, as always, sharing valuable insights. You know, which was very important. Even Shubhakanta says that thank you, sir, for such a beautiful session. So yeah, feedback for you. Thank you. So yeah, this was it that we had for the session. I have just posted a last, a final poll that you will see. Uh, uh, it's it's a poll where I want to ask you about the feedback of the session. So far, there is seventy five percent participation, and everybody has said that the session was helpful. So uh, for that, uh, yeah. So uh, also participants, you know, you all can let me know. I'm just post uh, sharing my email ID. Okay, so Mukesh has left. Not a problem. I'm just.